Hey everybody, I hope you're all having a great start to your week and today I want to take some time to talk about what are my recommendations for some good shoes if you just happen to be a heavier runner. I myself run around 230 to 240 pounds and uh, you know I just have some experience both from you know reflecting on some of my times getting into more higher mileage running as a heavier individual uh, and also just running and racing on a regular basis at this point now uh, again still as a heavier individual so let's jump right into what we're going to talk about today as far as what shoes I recommend for heavier runners. So first things first, just to, to clear things up, these are all shoes that I've purchased myself over the years. Some of these are older models, um, really just one shoe in particular that I'm gonna talk about. I'm only recommending if you were to try out the newer model yourself uh, that I admit I have not put my foot in yet to this day. So I'll be clear on which one that is, but I do have some other good recommendations here. To get us started, I'm gonna start off with just some daily trainers that I think would work really well for someone who just happens to be heavier weight. I generally do not cross over to the wide shoe sizing realm. Um, usually okay with a normal shoe size um, as far as the width, but I do get between a 12 and a half and a size 13. And again, you know, it just helps sometimes with a heavier person to have something that is has a little bit wider base. I don't run instability shoes, which is also something that's important to note. Um, and so with all that said, I'm going to recommend first the Nike Zoom X Invincible Flyknit. This is a really nice soft shoe underfoot. One of the other things that I run into often as a heavier runner is that a shoe that is just lower to the ground, lower stack height with a firmer foam, I usually feel the ground a little bit too much and maybe more than other runners that are in you know the 100 pound to 150 pound range. Um, the ZoomX Invincible Flyknit does, has plenty of stack height and ZoomX foam to keep me, even as a heavier person, really bouncing along off the ground. It's a great recovery shoe and daily mileage shoe. Obviously, it's a bit dirty here because I've been using it quite often recently as I finish the New York City Half Marathon. And as I begin training for the Brooklyn Half Marathon in a few months with a few other half marathons and mountain races along the way before then, uh, this is going to be a staple of my rotation, again, just simply simply for its softness. It has a nice wide outsole uh, and not too uh, aggressive of a you know squeeze in the middle of your uh, foot here, just under the forefoot. That can kind of lead to some instability, which again, any kind of instability in the shape of the outsole, I think for myself as a heavier person, just exacerbates any kind of like little imbalances or injuries and things like that. So it is really important for us to, you know, maintain, you know, the, the muscular strength on the outside of our hips and our glutes and things like that. That, but the shoes can also do a lot to help us you know not be too instable or anything like that while still using a neutral road running shoe so the next shoe that I'm going to recommend for daily miles and also this one kind of gets up into that long run range uh, is the ASICS glide ride now this is the ASICS glide ride one I did just look online and even on websites like Fleet Feet you can still purchase the glide ride one instead of the glide ride two uh, this particular shoe has about 35 millimeters of stack height in the heel, so it is up there as a nice, you know, thicker midsole, kind of protects, again, me as a heavier person from, you know, the pounding on the ground. It has a really nice rocker shape that actually keeps you moving uh, very smoothly through your stride. And I actually first picked this shoe up when I was training for an ultra marathon. So I was doing 20 to 30 mile long runs in this shoe and they always made the miles just breeze right by. I never had any discomfort or anything like that in this shoe. It's a very comfortable and plush upper, the heel collar and all of the you know foam and softness around the tongue and your ankle will keep you nice and comfortable and locked into place. It's a bit heavier. It's close to 10 ounces, I think, in the you know traditional like men's nine and a half. Uh, it's really not all that bad and this shoe really does keep you moving at a nice pace in a longer distance run because of that rocker shape. Now if I was to think about going a little bit faster, uh, one of my recommendations here would be the Hoka Rincon 3. 
A uh, couple reasons, they really improve the durability of this shoe. This shoe has probably close to 200 miles now for me myself, and there's just starting to be some outsole wear. It definitely started maybe 25 to 50 miles ago, but it's mostly cosmetic. The shoe still feels pretty good. Uh, it has a really nice wide outsole, a super stable platform, so that way no matter how much weight you're throwing around, as you get moving, you're really not gonna be off balance in any way. Now again, it's not a stability shoe. There's no stability elements that make it kind of rough sometimes, either in the arch of the foot or just uncomfortable along the outer uh, kind of shank here along the outsole. You know, some people may need stability shoes. I don't necessarily think it's the right direction for most people to go. So that's again why I say just a nice big stable platform. This shoe still comes in at 7.4 ounces, so it's very light and very easy to get moving. Getting your stride, your tempo, your uh, cadence up is really no issue at all in the Ring Cone 3. Durability, haven't had any issues being a heavier individual. I think it's a lower du durability shoe overall probably close to maybe 300 miles. I would definitely end up retiring this shoe just because of the creases in the midsole, um, the overall maybe deadening of the midsole foam, but it comes in at a relatively cheap $110, $120, depending on where you find it. And you kind of get what you pay for as far as the lifespan of the shoe in this particular case. But the upper is comfortable. There's enough cushioning and everything, even at that lightweight to, to certainly not make it an uncomfortable shoe. You could use it as a daily trainer, but again, more importantly, you can use it to get up in the tempo and up your pace because of the nice lightweight shoe and build overall. Uh, so this next shoe, as I promised, I'd let you know fully that I have not tested it myself. This is the Kinvara 10. I do not necessarily recommend the Kinvara 10 for anybody, uh, in my experience in this shoe. And part of the reason for that is the midsole foam is just very hard. It's not a soft midsole foam. But what I do like about this shoe is again, it has a very wide platform um, as far as the forefoot is wide enough for someone like me. It doesn't aggressively cut in in the midsole to give you any kind of weird instability or off balance feeling when you are a little bit more on your heels. And that creates a really, really stable platform. And what they've done with the Kinvara 13, again, I have not tried it myself just because I didn't have a good experience in this shoe personally, but I believe they've changed the outsole and midsole pretty drastically where it's a much softer ride now. So it's more of a recommendation if you are in a running shop, if you know you can find uh, the Kinvara 13 with a good return policy. I might give it a shot if I was you. I might give it a shot eventually if I was me and I just have the time to test it out. Um, this shoe with a softer, bouncier midsole, I think would be a great option for me. It's already a lighter shoe. It really, again, just was the density of the foam that didn't work, but I think they've made a lot of strides to change that and soften it up into the Kinvara 13 at this point. And uh, I just think it could be a good possibility if that outsole is still nice and stable and they've softened up the midsole uh, pretty well. So let's dive into the racing shoe category now. Uh, again, you know, anybody can use any shoe. You really need to kind of figure out what works for you. Um, being a heavier runner doesn't mean you're inexperienced. I, I think I have quite a number of years under my belt at this point in learning and growing and you know, discovering things that I like and don't like about different shoes. I actually love the Vaporfly Next Percent 1 and 2. It may be one of my favorite marathon shoes ever half marathon certainly, and all the way down to road 5Ks, even probably a mile, I would still use this shoe. But when it comes to what's better for us heavier individuals, again, I like to find that nice stable platform under your foot. And you can see between the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly, just look at the difference in particular with the heel width. There's a lot more ground contact here on this width area in the back of the Nike Alpha Fly as opposed to the Vaporfly, which is pretty narrow. So again, if you have you know, up above 200 pounds coming down on the ground and you have any kind of instability or any imbalance that you just haven't worked out quite yet, you know, you're gonna be, have a lot of weight shifting in different directions as you land on that heel if you're not staying perfectly centered. And it just puts you at risk maybe for developing a few other stress injuries or things from running high mileage or racing fast and hard for a long distance. So I would recommend the Alpha Fly just for that wider platform. 
And the same is in the forefoot. Um, it's a little bit deceiving because of this piece of rubber right here that goes a little bit higher than the Alpha Fly does. But what you will see in the Alpha Fly is essentially there's this piece of rubber that I would say extends out in this particular area just to give you a little bit of a wider forefoot landing. And again, just a little bit of a more stable platform when it comes to these racing shoes. So as far as comfort as a heavier runner, as far as getting into some of these super shoes as a heavier runner and still discovering for yourself, you know, if you're there yet with the balance and the strength and all the other things that you need to develop over time with running, I might recommend going with the Alpha Fly first, just again, because it's a little bit wider base. It doesn't feel quite as awkward when you first put this shoe on and walk in it. But again, walking in a shoe really doesn't mean anything. This shoe still runs perfectly. It's just a little bit more unstable to walk in. And even though it feels good when you're running, it could lead to little bits of instability and little bits of being off balance that could lead to an issue if you just don't have the experience yet. So that's why I would recommend the Alpha Fly if you wanna cross over into that shoe, super shoe racing realm there's no reason that we shouldn't be able to use super shoes as heavier runners and this would be my choice again to kind of ease your way into that area and get out there and race really fast so those are my recommendations kind of what I've tried what I've found that works for me I do need to get outside for a three mile run now as we officially kick off our training for the RBC New York Road Runners Brooklyn Half Marathon. And definitely subscribe down below if you wanna follow along with the training as we really dive deep into that training block and get ready for race day. Uh, so let's go outside. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments as far as the shoes. And uh, yeah, that's, that's really all the recommendations I have for today.